Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Tuesday the 1st of September 2020 and yesterday we published a video entitled Inflation may not push up precious metal prices quite as soon as one thinks. Where we pointed out that those expecting runaway inflation leading to hyperinflation anytime soon may in fact find themselves somewhat disappointed, especially after the recent reports from Europe that it's actually deflation that is more of a worry for now. As many within the precious metals stacking space are relying on such inflation occurring to give gold and silver prices that meteoric boost to the $10,000 an ounce gold and $100 to $600 an ounce silver that many of the pumpers have been advocating for the past 10 years, may have to wait a little longer than envisaged. Well, it was interesting to see an article published by James Hershysk, contributor to FX Empire and someone whom we occasionally follow as he isn't normally prone to the hyperbole that many in this area are. This is what he had to say about gold today and then please pay close attention to what he stated towards the end as it reflects quite similarly to what we were quoting yesterday. Quote, Price of gold fundamental daily forecast. Range-bound trade suggests traders want short-term stimulus. Gold was sitting at a two-week high when a better-than-expected ISM number took some of the shine off the rally Tuesday morning. Gold futures are trading higher by giving back most of its earlier gains at the mid-session on Tuesday. Early in the session, prices edged up as a weaker dollar made dollar-denominated gold a more attractive investment. However, prices began to fall on profit-taking after better-than-expected US manufacturing data pulled the precious metal down from a two-week high. The dollar was hovering close to a more than two-year low, making gold cheaper for holders of foreign currencies. The greenback has been under pressure since the US Federal Reserve last week announced an average inflation target policy, which will allow rates to stay low, even if inflation rises a bit in the future. Gold is often seen as a hedge against inflation and currency debasement, while lower interest rates reduce the opportunity cost of holding non-yielding bullion. Now, gold was sitting at a two-week high when a better-than-expected ISM number took some of the shine off the rally. The news is not expected to change Fed policy that has cemented lower rates for years, but it was strong enough to encourage gold investors to trim their long positions. US manufacturing activity accelerated to a more than one and a half high in August. The Institute for Supply Management data showed. Prices began to retreat after Treasury yields rose slightly as traders digested strong U.S. manufacturing data. According to a report, the U.S. manufacturing activity continued to rebound in August from the pandemic lows. The Institute for Supply Management said on Tuesday its manufacturing PMI jumped for a third straight month to a reading of 56 last month, the highest level since January 2019. The gauge was at 54.2 in July. Short-term outlook. Since the Fed announced its policy change last Thursday, gold is trading higher, but we haven't seen the runaway rally that many bullish traders had anticipated. The lack of clarity from the Fed may be one reason behind the price action. The lower US dollar and steady to high US Treasury yields may be the other reasons. In my opinion, the market is trading in a tight range because the Fed move is seen as a long-term decision. Its plan to average inflation takes place over the long run. There really aren't any short-term expectations because inflation is expected to remain stubbornly low. Furthermore, Fed officials don't seem to really know how it's going to work. 
Recent comments suggest they aren't predicting anything until they can see how it plays out. Yesterday, FOMC member Richard Clarida said it would be business as usual at the next Fed meeting in September, while moving on from last week's announcement. Furthermore, Goldman Sachs added the Fed is not likely to raise rates until 2025. That's enough to underpin gold prices, but may not be enough to trigger another short-term rally. Gold traders are more likely to react in a bullish manner if the government approves another stimulus package. That's the end of the quote. Now, we've seen gold today aim for that $2,000 level, but it only managed to reach $1,992, although it has currently fallen back to 1974 as at 1800 GMT plus 1, which is the time we're producing this video podcast. But it's still $9 higher than last Friday's close. Silver targeted $29 today and managed to reach $28.92 and has fallen back to $28.39, some 87 cents higher, that's 87 cents higher than Friday's close. The issue now, of course, is Will there be another attempt later in the week, or are we going to have some more consolidation? Well, the dollar index is stable right now at 92.17, little change from its opening. And frankly, much is going to depend on data being announced later in the week. As we pointed out in Saturday's weekly update, we have the ADP employment figures tomorrow, plus weekly jobless claims on Thursday, and non-farm payrolls on Friday. Analysts will be paying close attention to these three. We also have the services PMIs on Thursday, and these will be closely watched and compared with the manufacturing PMIs already mentioned. Now, we have made our position quite clear that precious metal prices are in a good space for further rises looking ahead. But we must not expect such rises to be vertical or quite as significant as the pumpers are attempting to convince you that they will be. If we get the time tomorrow, we'll show you, actually, just for interest, how the pumpers tried to manipulate you into taking drastic immediate action. And we can show you directly one of the techniques they use. Hopefully we'll have the time to do that. It's not earth-shattering, but it's of interest. Meanwhile, there are still a few hours before US equity markets close, but they're currently in a positive territory, up between a quarter and 1%, and European markets broadly closed more or less level. Now, before we go, we should really mention a little more about silver. One of James's colleagues, Vladimir Zernov, published the following earlier today, quote, Silver managed to settle above the resistance level at $28.50 and continues its upside move as the US dollar remains under serious pressure against a broad basket of currencies. The US dollar index declined below the 92 level and gained more downside momentum. Weak inflation data from the euro area did not manage to provide any support to the American currency, which is bullish for all precious metals, including silver. Not surprisingly, gold also benefits from the US dollar weakness. Spot gold has firmly settled above the 20 EMA of 1950 and is currently trying to get to the test of the 2000 level. A move above this psychologically important level will likely lead to increased upside momentum and provide support to other precious metals, including silver. Meanwhile, the gold to silver ratio has declined to new lows and managed to get below the August lows at 69.50 to 1 and continues its downside move. The gold to silver ratio's RSI is at moderate levels, so there's plenty of room to gain more downside momentum. At this point, the setup is favourable for silver. The US dollar remains under significant pressure, 
while go the gold to silver ratio is declining to lows not seen from 2017. In this environment, silver maintains solid chances to test multi-year highs at $29.85. Silver breached the resistance at $28.50 and continues its upside move. Despite the strength of the recent upside move, RSI is still in the moderate territory, so silver has plenty of room to gain more momentum in case the US dollar continues to lose ground. The next material resistance level for silver is located at multi-year highs at $29.85. There are no important levels between $28.50 and this figure. On the support side, the previous resistance at $28.50 will likely serve as the first material support level. And in case silver manages to settle below this figure, it will head towards the next important support level at $27.75. So, what do you think? Are we going to see $30 silver this week? Or is it going to remain within the sort of $27 to $29 range? Do share your thoughts. Thank you so much for listening. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. And press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative and if so please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Music